He's right. He is 100% unassailably correct. Scott Palmer. Scott Palmer in the left. Krista Baldwin in the right. Palmer, Razor Direct, Mark Industries. Back in the cockpit. Scott has not spent a whole lot of time driving the last year or two, but he has fielded cars for a couple of other drivers. And for Krista Baldwin, working with Lucas, McLeod, FTI, the Leopard spots, we cleared that up. Yes. There was a debate about that last week. Okay. Somebody said Cheetah. I said, oh, I think it's Leopard. And it is Leopard. That's Leopard. It That's is Leopard. Leopard. Yes. Katie Butera, one of her best friends, if not her best friend, is backing her up right now. Katie Butera's grandfather, little John Butera. Katie is wearing a 1974 authentic Don Prudhomme Army crew shirt as she backs Krista to the starting line. I love the appreciation for the history that, that Krista has, that all of her friends have. How they approach this sport is very admirable, and I think it's just, it's, all of it's just fantastically cool. I gotta tell you, Katie looks way better than that thing than Snake ever did. <laughs> Scott Palmer on the other side of the racetrack. The RacerDirect.com RJS Mark Motorcycles Machine. I mean, Snake's an okay looking guy, but really. Krista Baldwin, 381.7, a career best run made in Brainerd, Minnesota. The conditions are better here. She may and likely will try to dip, try to dip into the 70s here. Up by the center line, saw a little pop down there at the finish line. Krista Baldwin goes 386 at 305. Palmer goes 397 at 264 miles an hour. And it looked like just a little curve pop, like the panel's coming out. It certainly wasn't a big boomer down there. But 3.972, 264 for Palmer, 386 for Krista, 305. Take another look. Yeah, we watched Krista Baldwin's car making its way down the racetrack, picked the front end up off the starting line, set it down pretty gently. Header flames look clean. Little move here in the middle of the course as the clutch begins to lock up. She corrected it nicely, holding the car in the groove. And yes, flames came down, and then the panel came out. Yeah, it doesn't look like it took the blower off. For those of you fans that may not know, it is required. Ah, it's a flesh wound. It is required for all of these cars to have burst panels in the manifold. In the event of a small backfire, the panels will let go and release the pressure from the manifold, hopefully keeping everything bolted together. In the event of a slightly bigger backfire, the manifold, the blower studs will break, letting the blower come loose and letting the pressure escape. And in the event of a kablooey, the blower disappears, letting <laughs> the pressure escape. It becomes the ultimate pressure relief valve, the ultimate exp expensive pressure relief valve. You know, the uh, I have access to the Any Trace Digital Archive. We make a lot of content out of there, and I, I've loved to go back and watch the old races. And the, some of the broadcast teams they had in those days were crazy. Early in the 80s, it was Jim Lampley and Sam Posey, the great road yeah. racer. And, and to, when we watched that replay, I've always will never forget something Sam Posey said. He said, you know, drag racing is participated in by people who claim they love cars, <laughs> and yet every run they go down the racetrack, they seem to be trying to destroy them. Hey, fun fact for you hardcore fans, talked about the fact that the blower sometimes will separate from the manifold. You would think, right, biggest, strongest, toughest bolts in the history of the world to hold those parts together? The studs that hold the blower to the manifold are aluminum, and they are undercut. They are designed to fail in the event of a backfire because you would rather have the studs break, the blower come loose, and let the concussion out than have the blower bust in half to let the concussion out. But the studs that hold the blower to the manifold are aluminum, and they are designed for a controlled failure under load. 